So, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is a topic that doesn't require a lot of um, addressing because it's it's so simple. And with a new GM underneath uh, this in this team, hopefully something gets done where some type of rejuvenation comes in and, you know, just changes the atmosphere and, you know, puts not just the AFC West teams on notice, but the entire league. Agreed. So uh, let's switch. Uh, let's switch gears. And let's get into what everybody's been talking about. And I'm surprised we haven't got a question about it yet, which is the Matthew Stafford trade. So me personally, Rich, and me and you talked about this before we went live on the air. I'm, I say, you know, good riddance in terms of no more having to worry about Matt Stafford. I don't have anything against him. I just I'm, I'm really happy that George Payton didn't pull the trigger when that counter offer came from the lions and in, in terms of what they wanted. And I'm really glad that Peyton did not bite. And I've been hearing it all day from, uh, from my co-host on my high round table, people on social media, you know, going back and forth. Broncos country is divided, rich. Some people think that the Broncos, you know, missed out that they should have went out, uh, you know, put more chips on the table to get Matthew Stafford, but uh, you're going to hear it from me first. I say that it's, it's done. And hopefully this puts a kibosh also on this whole thing with Deshaun Watson, because as much as you can Photoshop a Broncos jersey on Deshaun Watson all you like, that's not going to happen. Because if you think what the Rams gave up for Matthew Stafford was ludicrous, just imagine what the Texans are going to want for somebody of Deshaun Watson's character and caliber, I should say. The, the problem with what they gave up for Matt Stafford was – it was worse, actually. I mean, the, the Rams <laughs> blew my mind what they ended up giving away for Stafford. And and I first off, this is going to be one of those kind of boring segments, I guess, because, you know, every show you want like the one side, guy on the one side and the other guy on the other to kind of start butting heads. Um, un unfortunately, that's just not going to happen this go around. I actually completely agree. Um, my my take and it, you can go back and watch our uh, our last episode, which I highly recommend everybody does. Um our last episode there was the one thing I brought forward. I said, we, I, I want us to put something on the table for Matt Stafford because I do believe he is an upgrade from, from Drew Locke. 100%, no questions asked, it, it full, full stop. But you can't give up more than even that first round pick and that's it. Really, like that full stop, that's it. And, and you give it up for this year and this year alone because you're basically immediately upgrading one of the most important positions on the field and then, but what's more important than that is you're not jeopardizing your future by giving away all those additional ones, which are premium picks. And I don't care where you're picking in the first round. And you need to retain the 2021 draft, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth round, because you don't get to five and 11 when you're only one quarterback away. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And, you know, and I've been hearing, I don't know who I heard this comparison from somebody who said, that you know Matthew Stafford is going from you know cold cold and snowy Detroit to you know warm and sunny LA and in my head I'm like they play in a dome Ford Field is a giant dome so it could be sunny and bright outside all you like or rainy or cold the temperature inside is still the same thing so that's not that's not a factor so to me that was pretty <laughs> pretty a pretty dumb comparison but I think that for the Rams, the Rams gave up, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was between five for the next five to six years of their first round draft picks for Jalen Ramsey, for now Matthew Stafford, and I forget who else, but maybe it's just those two guys. But for the next five or six years, the LA Rams will not be picking in the first round unless they can do something in terms of trading back up there. Uh, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just no, how I, no. I perceived it. And to me, that's, you know, I, I like to gamble sometimes, Rich. I like to do scratch offs and, you know, play the lotto when it inflates up to eight, nine hundred million. But for me to put all my chips in like that and a Super Bowl or bust, that is probably one of the biggest gambles I've seen so far. One of the greatest takes I saw on this, and it was more not a take, it was more just a straight comment. If Actually, if you want to be honest, it's a fact. Um, Aaron Donald doesn't exist in the third, fourth, and fifth round. Okay? Like, like, like the Rams didn't get Aaron Donald in 
the later rounds of the draft. They got him in the first round of the draft. Mm-hmm. And if if I'm correct, I think it's something like six or seven years in a row now they're not going to have a first round pick in the NFL draft. Yep. Um, because they gave away the first round pick for Jalen Ramsey. They gave her a, a first round pick for another player that is escaping my mind. And then even before that, like they gave away two firsts in order, I think, to move up to get Goff in mm-hmm. that draft where they they got him from. And then the next draft that they ended up with a first round pick in, they drafted Darnold or um, Aaron Donald. Sorry. Oh, Aaron Donald, yeah. yeah. Um, Aaron Donald. And then I don't think they've had a first round pick since. Like it, it's, it, it's, I, I just don't get it. And, and to me, I think that puts them in a very dangerous position. One which I was very concerned with, with George Payton history, particularly what the uh, Vikings have done in terms of their cap piece is if you give away all those first round draft picks and you need to rebuild yourself with talent, the only option that you then have to really get that premium level kind of talent is to then go pay free agents. So then you end up in this like almost cycle where if you want to continue to be competitive, you almost need to almost overpay to then get that talent into your team. And then you end up getting cash strapped through the uh, cap. So you're almost, you're really shooting yourself in your foot in my opinion, by continuously giving up these first round picks and not treating them with the value that they deserve. 